Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In November 1857, a Finnish newspaper called Suometar published a funny story about a trial held in Boston. A Boston city police officer took a young woman to court because her massive crinoline skirt was blocking the entire city sidewalk. The author has to then explain to the readers what a crinoline is. According to the story, when the judge asked if the defendant was present, he was told that she is behind the door, waiting, but this door is too narrow and she cannot fit through it. Steel cage crinolines were first patented in Paris by R.C. Milliet. The year was 1856 and the invention quickly became hugely popular, mainly because they allowed women to achieve a fashionable silhouette without having to wear multiple layers of starched petticoats. The crinoline spread around the world, arriving in Finland at the same time as the story was published. Imported crinolines and crinoline steel allows us to track how fast this fashion spread in the north. Between January 1st, 1857 and August 31st, 1858, 588 crinolines were imported to Helsinki and Turku. In addition, 92,500 cubits of crinoline steel were imported, which was enough to make 3,700 crinolines. The fashion spread from the south towards the north. Crinolines were advertised in Turku in July 1858, in Kuopio in October 1859 and in Oulu in 1860. Crinolines then spread from big cities to the countryside. This fashion was taken up not only by the upper classes, but also by some women of the lower classes. The poorest even crafted their own crinolines out of willow, juniper or rowan branches. Finnish newspapers published both praising and condemning articles on this new fashion. The most of the resentment was directed towards servants and countrywomen, for whom crinolines were deemed unnecessary privilege. In Tampere, the factories forbid factory workers from wearing crinolines during their working hours. During the first years the crinoline was round in shape, then the crinoline shape turned more elliptical, anticipating the bustle era. I am planning to make an 1860s dress, so I bought this elliptical crinoline pattern by Truly Victorian. I'll add a link to the pattern in the description. The first thing to make is the cotton skirt at the bottom. The purpose of the skirt was to prevent the wearer from tripping on the lowermost hoops. For the fabric, I'm using an old bed sheet. Then I mark down all the channels. I'm using a friction pen, the markings of which can be removed with heat. I now sew all the skirt pieces together. Then I fold the skirt lengthwise. I sew all the boning channels leaving room to both edges so that I can both sew the strip to the circle and add the wires. I finish the top edge of the skirt by turning the seam allowance in and top stitching near the edge. Now I can connect the ends of my long strip together to make a big ring. And while we are at the sewing machine, let's make the belt as well. I have here the hem skirt that I've added the channels to 
and it's now a circle but I still have a gap here that I can use to add the metal wires. I've also made a tiny bustle pad and a belt that has a, this kind of buckle. I have this uh, cotton tape that I'm going to fasten the metal rings to but I don't yet know how I'm going to fasten the metal to this because I don't have like tens of meters of channeling and I'm not going to buy it so let's see I could double these and then sew gaps or something like that I got a tip from a friend that this is good to be used for boning I'm not sure let's try it out this is actually some kind of tool to clean drains. Let's see if you can see it. But it's basically spring steel. I have bought two kinds. First I bought these, but then I realized that this is not enough. I also realized that these are really heavy, although I'm not sure how much weight this middle thingy here adds. And then yesterday, because I didn't have enough, yesterday I went, I bought two of these. These are much lighter. So I think that I'm going to put these at the upper part of the crinoline and then add these to the hem. There is like 26 meters of this. So I think we have to go outside to cut this in order not to destroy anything inside. And then I have to round the end so that I don't cut anything with it. So let's see. Let's go out. I thought cutting pliers would be enough to cut the steel in pieces, but I was wrong. I only managed to scratch the surface. So I needed a heavier tool. I got out my Tremel and used the circle cutter to cut the steel into pieces. I also use Tremel to smooth out the ends. If you are using train cleaner wire, I must warn you that it may be covered in grease. I wiped my wires in ethanol before bringing them close to my white fabric. Then I added the lowermost wires to the channels. Now that the wires are in, I can close the channels. I had to turn my sewing machine sideways to get enough room to manipulate the big skirt. The skirt is supported by cotton tapes. I decided that the easiest way to fasten the wires to the tapes would be to double the tape and sew narrow channels for the wires. Then it was time to figure out the tape situation. I made the bustle pad and now need to sew it to the belt. The bustle is held in place at the back with ties that are tied behind the hips. 
They are fastened to the tapes at both sides of the bustle. I decided to finish the ends of the bustle wire channels and attach the ties at the same time. And now I have to attach all the bustle tapes to the bustle. I had hoped that I could drill holes to the steel so that I could sew the ends in place. Unfortunately the steel was too hard for this, so I had to make channeling for the steel. Having to turn a few meters of narrow cotton tube was the most difficult part of this whole project. Then I sew the supporting tapes to the skirt. Now this is starting to look like a proper crinoline. It needs more steel, so I started with the bustle. I had forgot to close this one channel, so here I'm doing it by hand. The bustle wire channels are sewn to the side tapes. The circular wires between the bustle and the skirt didn't need any casing to keep them in place, so I decided to leave the steel bare. I attached the ends together with some black electrician's tape. So, here is the crinoline, now that it's ready. These narrow straps here I use to adjust the bustle part, and they go behind the bum. So, let's put it on. I was supposed to position the buckle so that it wouldn't coincide with the center front, but apparently I tightened my corset a little bit too much this morning. So it seems that it now lies to lay just where it shouldn't be. I could always move it sideways later if I want, it's just a few stitches. But yeah, here I have the bustle part and it's not too heavy and I can still sit down like this I just lift the hoops a bit so this is actually pretty easy to handle I can just lift from the these sides here and the back rises like this I also made a petticoat so if you want to see what it looks like with the petticoat on. This petticoat was made using the same pattern that I'm going to use to make the skirt on top. 
so I didn't bother filming it. The funny thing is that I just took an old bed skirt and took the ruffle from the bed skirt and just sewed it on. So that's a nice tip if you want to be lazy and you don't want to gather. Take some arranging to get all the skirts arranged, but here is it. I don't know whether you can see. So it looks like this. And it's surprisingly easy to maneuver also uh, if you want to sit on the ground or if you want to sit on a couch. So if I want to sit on the couch, I just lift the hoops and lay down. The only thing that is slightly difficult is to fit in a small bathroom cubicle. The next thing to do is to construct the skirt and the bodies. And that you will see in the next video. So please like and subscribe to this channel and see you later. Bye!